In this video, I'm showing the top part of the MicroMake 3D printer. Um, this is the assembly stage. Uh, you can see I have three short metal bars and I have triangles right here. Um, according to uh, their videos, that hex nut space that you see right there is the bottom. This is the top. So what I've done to get it to assemble is I went ahead and took their bag of their M4 10 millimeter screws. And there's a bag of square nuts, which are also M4. So I went ahead and assembled. I dropped two of them into one of the side. And if you see, I have the square nuts on it already. And the idea being that I'll be able to slide this on that part. Okay, as you can see, I have one corner is done and tightened. And I tried to push them all up into the corner so there wasn't much of a gap there. There's a little bit on one of them, but I'm sure it'll come out. So the way it works, is we just slide it in like so, and then I'll tighten it up on that. I'll kind of hold it in a little bit so I don't get a gap on the end and tighten it down like that. So that's one of them. And then the same thing on this. So I'll need to hold these nuts up and slide it in like so. And it looks like it's going to be a little harder on this end. Um, okay, the last one's the hardest one to do. I took the uh, Allen wrench and magnetized it. So you can see it hanging on the end there. And I'm going to use that to slide it down inside the groove so I can line it up with these uh, screws right there. Okay, for this phase of it, I'm going to put on the flanged pulley bearings and they'll be going in here. I flipped it over. You can see I have uh, one of the M3, I see an M320 bolt and an M3 nut and it appears that what I need to do is start this going inside there. You can see it'll cross over inside there. And since this is for a pulley, I'll be taking two of these, mounting them something like this, if I can get it to show up. Yeah. So you can see it's flanged bearing. So I'll put two of them in between there. Okay, it's assembled now. Um, I had to use not only the magnetic uh, Allen wrench to slide the screw along there, but I used a toothpick to go through and then pin the uh, nut, then removed the magnetic Allen wrench, and then slid the screw through and tightened it up. I've got one on. And uh, basically, I took a pair of needle nose and held the nut in there while I uh, tightened it on the other side. Okay, all four are on, and the tools I used right there, needle nose and the Allen wrench. And you can see a sample of it there, there, and there. Okay, now I'm working on the bottom triangles, and I have the vertex, which you can see the circle 
on the bottom. That is the bottom. So I have the short bars. I have this piece right here. This piece right here called for um, M4 by 8 screws. I'm going to put two of them on the uh, wider side. And little nut behind them, just like we did on the previous vertex, and then slide it into this one. So I'll resume here in just a minute when I have those nuts in there and can slide it on. Okay, I have the screws on it, and it will slide into this this way. It calls for it to be in the center and then tighten down. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, now I completed that piece right there. And I got all my open beam, the short open beams out to finish this. So again, that's the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and load screws and nuts. Screws will come in from the inside, go to the outside and the nuts will be on this side and then the beams will slide in. So I'm gonna go ahead and put nuts on all Three of those. Okay, all the nuts and bolts are in. Remember the uh, nuts are to the outside. Um, the nuts were M4 and the um, bolts were M4 tens. So now we're going to be assembling the uh, frames by sliding them in. Okay, one note before I get too far is the side with the control board, that's this guy, is on the bottom and going to the inside. So I'll continue assembling those. I just slid it into the nuts over there on that one. Okay, I have uh, effectively the left side of each of the vertices installed and tightened down. And uh, now I'll slide it all together to make the triangle. Okay, here's a shot of the assembly technique to complete the triangle. You'll see I've just barely got each nut slid in for these final sides. And so now I'll just push them on in and then tighten it down. Okay, now the bottom is complete. Um, all the pieces are in, tightened up. As you can see, this guy is on the bottom, on the inside. Start on the next phase now. So I've got the both the top and the bottom triangles completed. Okay, you can see that I've got one of the stepper motors installed. Um, I was using M3.8 bolts and what I did on the web it said that I needed to <clears throat> have every one of these gears exactly the same depth so I used this um, larger allen wrench that I had to give just every one of them the same amount of space right here basically it said if you didn't do that that all three have to be identical in the depth there. If they aren't, you're gonna have print problems. So fairly important to get that correct. One other point about these is there is a flat edge on the stepper motor. And if I pushed it down as much as it showed in their video, um, it would be like half the, the gap you see right there. Um, but that set screw would not be on the flat area. So I pushed it up just enough uh, that it would be on the flat area. Uh, hopefully it won't slip or anything like that by doing that. Um, and we'll find out how it prints um, when I get to that stage. Okay, I'm going to attach the extruder parts. So this piece right here, it called for three M3 by eight bolts, which will go right there. And it's like I have uh, M3 by 20. I have the 
uh, feeder gear and an idler bearing and two washers and then two M3 nuts and it calls for the 2.5 allen wrench and the smaller one. Okay I'm going to be installing the uh, feeder gear and that will be this so what you want to do is you take the flat side right there and of course you want the set screw on that side but one of the key things to keep in mind is there's a hole right through there where the filament will go and this guy needs to be right in the middle of it so you can use that as your guide and then I'll tighten that down as soon as I get it lined up. Okay, actually to fit properly, I had to flip this over. I did have it that direction. And you have to flip it this way. So it'll line up with the uh, holes for the filament. So they'll go in like this. And then we'll line up on it. Okay, now I'm going to assemble the wider the wire feeder jig. So that's going to be these two pieces. And the bearing goes down inside that, like so. And then probably have to take both hands to do this, but it'll meet on the other side. And I'll use one of these screws to go through there and a washer and a nut. Okay, I've attached it the majority of the idler bearing is on the side where the pinch roller is. Um, one screw went in here and of course I had tightened with the nut um, the one that goes to the idler. Now it wants the feeder attachment to go in right over here into this threaded side. So I'll go ahead and attach that. Okay, now I uh, put the wing nut, you notice the direction I put it on, and then it'll go in that washer. And then this last little nut goes in a little slot right there above my finger. And the bolt and the wing nut come in with the washer on the course come in through the top here and tighten down on that nut okay final shot the nut is in that slot the wing nut and bolt come down through the top and of course as you tighten it down that applies pressure then on the pinch roller Okay, I'm going to be assembling the extruder hot end. Well, that's this guy right here. Um, looks like it calls for these three plastic pieces right here. Um, it did call for one of these connectors, the white connectors, and one end stop. Um, it looks like it comes with four end stops. So, what? One for each of the vertical. Um, X, Y, and Z poles, and then one for the auto level. So I'll resume here in a minute once I figure out how all these go together. Okay, it calls for uh, one, it calls three frequency plastic head. Um, as you can see, it's got three holes. Looks like all the others are just two hole. There's a small spring it came with calls for uh, two 2.5 by 16 millimeter bolts 